Hey everybody, it's your boy Scott with Revolution Modern Martial Arts coming at you with yet another video about holding mitts. I'm in the studio as always with my man, Mr. Andy. I'm going to work on and talk about the three biggest mistakes to avoid when you're holding mitts. This could be whether you're starting out or you've been holding mitts for a while, uh, some things that make the tool less efficient. And you got to go into mitt work theory, in my opinion, and I've been holding mitts for a lot of years and I've gotten pretty decent at it. Uh, and I've developed some people with some very good hand skills based on my ability to hold mitts properly and coach them properly. And I've seen some things out there that always had me scratching my head. You have to use a tool for the proper application, whether it's mitts or a tool in your toolbox around your house. You don't want to use a hammer to screw in a, uh, screw in a screw. It makes no sense, right? Mm -hmm. Or a screwdriver to bang a nail in. You can do it, but it's not efficient. So I want to utilize the mitts. Overall, what the mitts are doing is teaching the fighter or the student how to hit something that they see. All right, because if you're sparring with somebody, they're not going to tell you, hit me, or they shouldn't. Or if you're fighting somebody, or you're in a self-defense situation, they're not going to yell out and say, hit me here, I'm open. Your body has to learn how to go to those open spots, and that's what the mitt, mitts will help you do and help you learn. Right. So, uh, first mistake we want to avoid when we're holding mitts is constantly showing. When I'm coaching someone on holding mitts, I refer to it as a kind of a show and tell or hide and show, right? So as you know, we got to stay in frame, but in all reality, I hold the mitts. If I'm working with Andy, I hold the mitts against my chest. He doesn't see the fronts of the mitts. He doesn't see the fronts of the mitts. I'm in my fighting position. We'd be moving around, moving around. I'd stop. Then I would show him a mitt. Boom. Or I'd show him a combo that we've discussed. Then I'd move again. I would hide them. I don't want to walk around continually uh, with his mitts up this way because he's just going to, if he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, he sees those mitts, he should be punching them. All right? But he doesn't need me to do that. You could do that with a heavy bag, right? Mm -hmm. Just stand there and throw punches over and over and over again. So as the mitt holder, you have to be in a fighting position. You have to move around, hide the mitts, stop, then show for a strike, combo, what have you, move again. Okay, that's the first thing we want to avoid is that constant showing. Second thing we want to avoid, Andy, is the, uh, the dizzy man. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the dizzy man? Weak. Weak. <laughs> All right, so mitty, holding mitts is dynamic. It's hard to do it well, especially for somebody who's beginning, so don't beat yourself up. But what a lot of times you see with beginning, uh, beginners holding mitts is they've gotten maybe the show and tell down, but as we're working, let's work a little bit, Andy, and stay in frame, but it's... And you can see we're just constantly moving in a circle like this. It's going to make Andy dizzy, or it's just going to be boring. It's not dynamic. Most sparring situations or fights don't happen that way. I mean, people circle when they're in a fight, don't get me wrong. But not like that. Yeah, they don't just march around in a circle and absorb blows, right? So what you want to do, instead of marching in a circle, again, is vary up your footwork. Because as I'm training somebody with the mitts, I'm also going to be a little selfish. I want to get some training in myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be working, moving my, my footwork dynamically around and then holding mitts, making sure I'm properly training myself to move around the space in a fighting position. So that's our second one. Don't simply circle, have dynamic footwork mimicking a fight situation. The final one is the mistake I see uh, a lot of the times. I've even seen one time I went to like a, a gold's gym or something mm -hmm. and uh, this dude cracked out mitts with this girl and starts trying to be Joe Boxer trainer in the middle of like the bench sets and squat racks, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to avoid calling out the numbers. Again, I want to train my fighter, my student, my partner, how to hit something they see. If he's got to defend himself in the streets, if someone's attacking you in the streets and you need to punch them, mm -hmm. am I going to be over there saying, Andy, throw the right hand? No. No, it's not going to happen. For fighters that I trained in the ring, there's so much happening, you can't be giving instructions the entire time. They have to be able to fight on their own. The instructions got to be minimal. So what I'm getting at is if I want him to throw a straight right hand, I'm not going to say straight right or two. And this is what I would see. People will hold up and miss. All right, give me one, two, three. Great, give me one. Give me two. Give me a cross. Give me a jab. Jab, cross, hook. And the coach is telling them what to do. That's not necessary. If I hold the mitt this way, Andy should know that's a jab. If I hold the mitt like so, he knows it's a cross. So now, what I'm doing as a coach, I'm not telling him what to do. As he's punching, nice, bring it back faster. All right, chin, back to the chin, good. Out and back, back to the chin, there we go. Now, as he's hitting, I'm coaching him how to make his punches better, not telling him just throw a jab, right? So if I'm constantly, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, hook, Cross. There's no time for me to actually give him instructions on how to improve or fix mistakes. So that's our third tip. Make sure the person you're working with understands the basics of how what uh, target being presented means. This means cross. This means hook, uppercut, 
uppercut. All right, that's the way you do it. So there we go. This video went a little long, but that's the keys. Make sure number one, you don't always show the mitts. That's a bad mistake. Mm -hmm. Number two, don't walk in a circle. Number three, don't over talk it. Make sure your fighter student knows what the mitts are supposed to look like or knows what you're calling by the postures you're showing or the mitts that you're showing and then use that time to coach them to get better. Anyway, that's our video for today. Hope you guys like it. Try it out and see you on the next.